What's up everybody? Me and Fly Guys here with another tutorial. Got a request to do an all white Buford that I post, so that's what I'm gonna do today. Um, this is a 5 aught pretty good size hook. This is really a musky fly, but it's gonna be all white, so I start out with these white feathers for the tail, and I want them to be as ratty as possible. Like, I do not want them to be um, looking good. I tie them right in the middle and I just want them to be laying kind of flat back like it doesn't need to be perfect I don't care if it's perfect or not I just want it to be laying straight back um, so I do two kind of on top and then I'll come in with another two and sort of put them on the sides and they don't have to be the same length I like them to kind of be close to the same length but they don't have to be, it doesn't have to be pretty, basically, you know, like some guys love everything to be perfect and pretty. Well, for this, for Bufords and for musky, like as soon as a musky eats it, or pike, I guess, if you're using, uh, using it for pike, as soon as they hit it, it it's over. You know, the, the fly is no longer in good condition. So I don't care to use my best feathers for... Bufords, especially for musky flies, um, I want them to look ratty and kind of imitate sort of something that's not doing well. You know, that's what they feed on, is stuff that's not doing well. So, next step, uh, all I did was cinch it in here. Next step, I'm going to come in and take from the tip of the bucktail. This is going to be all white, so everything's going to be white. Um, take from the tip, not a lot, you know, a little bit. I, I would say... A third of a pencil like they say you know take a pencil grab a pencil width of a hair like uh, I think that's a little too much but anyway so I just have a little bit here that what I'm gonna do is I'm going to tie it in kind of close to the butts push down on the top pinch the sides push down on the top pinch the sides and then pull tight and that way, you'll have a nice even distribution around the hook shank. Nice 360 uh, degree profile. So I just do a few wraps, nothing crazy. Again, since it's since you've grabbed the fibers from the tip, they won't flail out like a crazy amount. You want them to stay kind of flat. So here, they're not they're not really flailing out all that much. So, which is good. So then go ahead and just kind of clean it up. Uh, next, what I'm going to do is add in some flash. This is uh, Crelex from MFC. And I don't want it to be like a flash tail. Like I don't want it to be super, super shiny. So I'm not going to grab a whole lot. But you want it to be about the same length as the tail. Maybe a little shorter even. And do that same thing where... You pinch down on it, kind of roll it a little bit, and then pinch the sides. Push down on it, pinch the sides, and then go ahead and tighten down. So this won't be a complete 360 degree one, but it will be a nice veil on both sides. So you have sort of fibers on both sides um, with a nice veil. So now you have this extra, you know, about one to two inch piece. What I do is I take it and I fold it underneath and tie it in on the underside. Now I know it's shorter, but, there you go, it's shorter, but it adds this sort of belly flash where it gives this taper, so you have sort of a taper on the bottom side here where then it goes up in. So I just, it just adds to the, to the profile of the of the Buford I think and I kind of like it. So now I'm going to do my first hollow tie and it's going to be really from the tip so it's uh it's right up here um, and again I'd, I'd rather do more tie-ins than thicker tie-ins and what I mean by that is when I grab 
my deer hair, I don't want a tremendous amount. Like, that's all I have. You know, that's not that many. So, when you're grabbing it, less is usually better. It will allow you to have better tie-in points. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin my thread clockwise. I'm going to drop it in. And I'm just going to gently secure it with two gentle wraps. Like, I mean, the hair would fall out if I wasn't holding on to it. The butts go right back to where my tie-in point ended on my previous segment. And again, I'm just going to push only once because they, they spin pretty easily. But keep that thread twisted. And then I'm going to pull down nice and tight and they should twist all the way around. I'm going to do a few more. And then before I go forward, I like to sort of just come back and clean up some of these tips back here. Some guys will wrap back over this section that kind of flares out, but I think that it adds sort of a nice little bulky look to it. So now I have my fibers around the hook. I'm just going to kind of make sure they're straight and puffed out equally. And I'm going to come in, this is just a tube that I have, um, and I'm going to come in and I'm going to flare it back a little bit, make sure all my fibers are straight, and they do look fairly decent. So there we go, I've pushed it back with my tube, I'm going to catch it. There I've caught all my fibers. Now instead of just coming up and wrapping it, pull forward first. So pull directly parallel with the hook, then come up. Most people just want to start wrapping to get that cone shape, but if you skip that parallel step, what it will do is it'll bring some fibers forward and uh, it doesn't look super, super great. That's when you kind of start getting stuff that doesn't look great. So I'm going to make a little cone here and just push my fibers back. Again, I want this to flare out quite a bit more um, than my tail. And just keep building that cone. Now, when you're building the cone, some things that you want to keep in mind are you want the wraps to be straight and not crooked, not going side to side, because if they're going side to side, then your fibers will lay down non-symmetrically and then it just doesn't look good. Remember to taper your cone. I forget all the time to just keep going. Go forward. It's your best friend. These are budding wraps. You don't want to wrap over the fibers. You just want to wrap next to them. Let's see. This is pretty close to where I want it to be. You can, I mean, you can see the fibers laying down as you do it each wrap. You can see it gets a little shallower and a little shallower. All right, since this is a musky fly, I'm gonna do a few. I would normally super glue or cement every tying point just cause you know, musky and pike, they have those things called teeth, so they are the ultimate destroyers of flies. And you know, these things take a little while, so yeah, I'm gonna speed this up while, while things dry. Alright, so I'm ready for my second tie-in point, and I'm literally doing the exact same thing. So I'm gonna speed this up for you here, I'm taking the same, same clump, doing the same thing, doing a reverse, tie in, literally the same exact thing. So I'm gonna speed it up for you guys. Okay, so there is my second hollow tie. I did the first bucktail tie in, there's my first one, there's my second one. And it's, I want it to be a little bit higher, but roughly the same angle, nothing too crazy. I like to have, I like my Bufords to be bulky, you know, to really push a lot of water. Um, so the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Crelax 
and I'm going to tie it in the same thing as I did before. I'm just going to veil it over. I'm not going to flip it underneath though. So what I'm going to do is tie it in and again just use your thumb and kind of pinch it down. Give it that nice veil. This will add some shading on the top of the fly. It'll give it that sort of dark or different colored back. Good contrast. And I'm going to work back to the back of my tie-in point. Right to where the there we go. Right to where the uh, hollow tie is. I'm just going to snip off these these ends. Again, you can fold it underneath if you want. Doesn't really matter. I just like this to be veiled on the top, and it just gives it this nice sort of shading and and good contrast. So now I. Right here, it depends how bulky you want your head to be. I want my head to be really bulky for this fly, so I'm gonna go ahead and start on the head. I probably have room to do one more small hollow tie here before I started the head, but I like bulky heads. So you're gonna do, what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab from the bottom of the bucktail in this corner is these kind of very, very hollow fibers. They They look differently and they feel differently um, and again, you don't need to grab a lot, but I like to grab a little more than what I've been grabbing. It just gives a bulkier head. So here, I probably have an actual pencil. You know, I probably have an actual pencil there. Um, and the first time you tie it in, you're going to have the veil with the tips. It's going to be a veil around. These are so hollow, they're going to stand straight up when you pinch them down. So the, the, the flat tips where you cut, they're going to stand straight up. So I like it to be about an inch. So I measure out an inch. That's going to be my tie-in point. Spin your thread clockwise so you can put a lot of pressure down on it. You're going to do the same thing. You're going to do one, two wraps, loose, loose wraps. Push with your thumb, pinch with your fingers and pull down when you're ready. And what you should get is this nice veil. It's gonna look like there's a gap here, but don't worry because when these fibers get pushed back, they are gonna help sort of push those fibers down. So here they've spread out. I'm gonna take my tool again and just push all the fibers back. Pushing it back. And there we go. Same thing, bring your thread right underneath parallel. And I build up a little thread dam, very, very small, because nothing serious. Because you don't want two, you don't want a big gap in between this tying point and your next tying point. So same thing, I go from the bottom and I grab another good size clump Except this time, there's not going to be any of the tips. So I'm going to cut them off, the wispy tips here, the ends. I'm going to measure out. So I'm going to put it down next to it like this. And I'm going to measure out, okay, there's the bottom of that. And right there is where I need to cut it. This will just save, save me time. So I need to cut it right there. Because after you do this head... You trim it, you know, to make it a little bit more uniform. And the less trimming, the better, because you know, once you once you trim, you really can't. All right, so again, you've loosely wrapped it twice. Push down on top, get it around the hook eye. I know it's tough to get it around the hook eye, but just go slow. Make sure that it's around, and when you feel like it's around, same thing, you're going to pull down nice and tight. Pull down nice and tight. And you should get this nice big ball looking thing. And, yeah, so you guys can see that a little bit better. So you'll get a little ball, and that's great, that's what you want. You want your fibers sort of forward and, and backwards and, and full. 
You can also look to see, you know, have I distributed around the hook enough? Again, I'm going to take my little tool. And I'm running out of, ouch, running out of a little room. But, you know what, I like to live risky. So I'm going to do another small one. I'm going to do another small section. Just because there's a little bit of space there, so. I always like to use all the space that you can. And, and you can use the eye of the hook because you have that big eye usually for Buford. So you can really use that hook to your advantage to sort of trap the fibers. To sort of trap the fibers around. And so there's my final one. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pull it back. And here, I don't really need my tool, I'm just gonna use my hands. So, I'm gonna wrap out front, build a little dam, just because I want the fibers to be pointing backwards. And again, if you don't have to. So you see, I have this nice, nice big head forming here, and really, really bulky, and it's gonna push a ton, a ton of water, which is great. So that's, that's it. I'm going to lock it in. And that is the mini white Buford. Now, I'm going to go through, you know, and trim it to make it uh, even and symmetrical. You could spend all day doing that. I don't, you guys can figure that out. I don't really need to show you that. But that's it. That's the mini white Buford. Um, it's about six inches long, pushes a ton of water, and has this really, really bulky head, and I love it. I really do. I like this fly a lot. So, thanks for watching, guys. Let me know if you have any questions about it or want to see any other videos. Just comment, let me know, and I'll, uh, and I'll post them. Check us out on Instagram. Please subscribe, and uh, thanks for watching. See you next time.